Hello, everybody. Welcome to my class. Today, I'm going to discuss about, and definitely I'll do some sums uh, about what are complex numbers. To understand the structure of a complex number, we must first introduce a new set of numbers, the set of imaginary numbers. The number system we use today has developed over time as new sets of numbers have, uh, have been needed to model new situations. Early mathematicians used natural numbers for counting. Later, zero and negative numbers were accepted as valid numbers and the set of integers was established. In Pythagoras time, mathematicians understood that rational numbers existed as they were the values in between integers. Pythagorean mathematicians thought that all numbers could be written as rational numbers. These same mathematicians were shocked by the discovery of irrational numbers such as root two, root three, and uh, numbers like root seven, uh, root five, something like that. In fact, they did not trust them as valid mm -hmm. quantities at the time. Even as late as the 17th and 18th centuries, some, fam some famous mathematicians still doubted that negative numbers were of use and thought that subtracting something from nothing was an impossible operation. So here we'll start with some simple facts uh, that in the set of natural or counting numbers n, there are no negatives and no zero. In the set of integers g, uh, there are no part or fractional values. In the set of rational numbers q, there are no irrational quantities such as pi. In the set of real numbers r, there are no numbers that when squared result in a negative value. Until now, the numbers with which we have been working have all been real numbers. That is, they belong to the set of real numbers, which includes the rational and irrational numbers. Real numbers can be represented on a one-dimensional number line called the real number line. In the 17th century, uh, the set of imaginary numbers I was accepted as a valid number set. Rena Descartes described the collection of numbers, collection of number sets that have been accepted as valid before that point as a set of real numbers. The new set, which he did not like in fact very much, uh, but be described as imaginary. He intended this to be an insult as he thought they were not of great importance. Many other famous mathematicians agreed with him. They were, however, quite wrong about that. This name has often confused uh, people or the mathematics learners uh, who, are, who are new to the area of this sort of studies. So what is an imaginary number and how is it related to a complex number that we are going to discuss now? In the new set of imaginary numbers, there are numbers that when squared result in a negative value. The set of complex numbers combines the real numbers as well as the imaginary numbers into a two dimensional rather than a one dimensional number system. Descartes described the numbers in the set of complex numbers as the sum of a real part and an imaginary part. Complex numbers are represented as points on a plane rather than points on a number line because of their two dimensional nature. So clearly accepting new sets of numbers as being valid is something mathematicians have struggled with over time. Uh, you might not feel comfortable with this idea, the set of real imaginary and complex numbers. 
uh, doesn't have application in the real world without imaginary and therefore complex numbers. Can you believe there wouldn't be mobile telephones? For example, as they are used to find audio signals, complex numbers are also used to generate fractals, which are used in the study of weather systems and earthquakes. Fractals are also used to make realistic computer generated images for movies. So let's now discuss what is complex number mathematically. So in general, we can see complex number that contains real numbers part as well as the imaginary numbers part. So in order to define the imaginary number, uh, let's take an example like, let me tell you one example here, like x and that's equals to zero and let's solve it, all right? And then see what happens here. So if you solve this equation, so there are a lot of way that you can solve is like you apply a quite equation from like that x equal to minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac by 2a or another way that you factorize this if it is possible otherwise you can use calculator see how it is so here in this case we have uh, like a square plus in 4x you can write two times of x times of two okay that means i'm giving uh, the shape of a square plus 2ab plus b square and here two to the two times two is four so in place of 4x we could write here but if you compare with 2ab term in place of b there is two and in place of x there is uh, a there is x and so we, are, we already have here x square so we require here a square term we already have so we, we require here two a square and two a square things we have put over here extra so mathematically we have to balance with with by minus two square and plus two is over here. So you write it plus two equals to zero. Now you can see from here up till here, it is like a square plus two ab plus b square where in place of a there is x and in place of b there is two. So it is a plus b whole square means x plus two whole square. And this is minus Two a squared means this is four and plus two means this is in fact it is minus two equals to zero and then if you go further you can see here that x plus two a square equals to if you transfer this two minus two to the right then it will be plus two and now you remove this as this a square that means you take a square root a square root uh, to the both sides in, in that case it is x plus two equals to plus minus of under root two, okay? So what we saw here is that x plus two equals to plus minus under root two, and this is a real number, all right? So also if you'd like to find the value of x because we have to solve it, so x equals to, you can transpose this two to our side, then it's going to be minus two plus minus under root two in exact form. So in fact, there are two uh, numbers. One is two plus under root two, and another is minus two minus under root two. Okay. So let's you can check them in the calculator. So in the calculator four up to three decimal places or up to the four significant figures over here. So what we could see here that the answer that we have got is both the answers are real numbers okay so let's see those numbers on a real number line in decimal all the number can be accommodated over here on real number line and that means it contains also the rational and irrational numbers and if you talk about these numbers you can see that it this is less uh, this is bigger than minus one so minus um, uh, bigger than negative one so it is uh, minus 0 0.586 is something between negative one and zero. So a bit near to negative one, all right? So here you can, uh, you could see that the number uh, minus 0 0.586 
is here somewhere and minus 3.414 is 3.414 means 3 is here then we have to go a bit left that is because this number is less than negative 3 so its position might be over here so it is minus negative 3.414 so in this case we could see that all kinds of numbers could be accommodated on this real number line okay now there are some situation where you will not find the place for the number that fits on this real number line so let's see what happens and in what kind of equation we encounter uh, that sort of problem let's now consider another kind of example of uh, quality equations i'm taking again so here you can see that this is x square plus 4x plus 8 and you need to solve it that means you have to find the values of that that means all possible values of x in this case so let's do the similar let's apply the similar method over here so it is x plus 2 equals to we write here plus minus under root of minus 4. so let's check that for the under root of any positive number or any real uh, number you know we have some values yes but here in this case if you use the calculator you may try yourself the calculator under root minus four and when you put the answer in the calculator then you can see that there is math error all right what does it mean the calculator system it means that it is fixed on the real number system and that means uh, this sort of number is in fact not the real that means uh, negative minus uh, under the root of negative four cannot be accommodated in this on this real num number line okay so why it happens is that and also you can see if you go further then you could write here plus minus and then this is uh, four times of minus one and that means it is under the root and plus minus under the root four and then you can separate them so under the root minus one and equals to plus minus two and under the root minus one so you can see that two itself can be accommodated here can be accommodated on this line okay but the entire under root minus four couldn't be found by using calculator also on this real number line that means that sort of thing that sort of difficulty was caused by this you uh, under uh, this uh, under root of the unit negative unit number okay so also you can try uh, that under the root negative one and you can see the calculator gives you error that means what you can say that under the root negative one cannot be defined in real sense. That means under the root minus one is a number which is alien to this real number system. All right, because it doesn't uh, fit to this real line. That means uh, this number has a different space. All right, and as it cannot be considered as the real number uh, real number therefore its name is now you can call it is imaginary number that i have discussed just earlier okay so therefore in this case what you can see is that like therefore you can write under the root minus one equals to i and this i doesn't fit onto the real number line okay so let's go further about that so we are going further from this place let me change the color so that it will be more obvious so here i have taken equal to continued equal sign continued so from here to last it is x if you transpose this plus 2 to another side it is going to be minus 2 plus minus 2 and in place of under root minus 1 we can indicate this number by i so we can write here 2i it's okay so even though 
i is alien to this real number system or what you can see that it is it has turned in association with the real numbers where you can see um, negative 2 and uh, positive 2 are the real numbers and this i is now combined with this sort of real numbers all right so what mathematician thought that uh, in order to deal further about this sort of uh, situation mathematician thought that yes i doesn't fit on this real number line which we can suppose for example this is x axis then let's have another axis for i where this imaginary number fits on okay so what mathematician supposed here is that this is x axis in fact and this is the y axis in fact so if you can if you write this on the coordinate form or in the vector forms for example it is minus 2 and this is we have two things here so we have two vectors minus 2 and minus 2 and also we have here minus 2 that negative 2 and it is positive 2 that means what you can suppose here that as real numbers lie on the x axis or y axis also but the one dimensional line is enough to accommodate all the real numbers therefore we take either x axis or y axis but here uh, the usual tradition is that it has been taken for the real number line and this is origin uh, origin as usual and y axis as imaginary axis so all the real numbers we can plot on the x axis and uh, and the imaginary number part we can plot along the y axis so for example if i'm taking the example of negative 2 and 2 so negative 2 is somewhere here this is negative 2 for example and somewhere here it is negative 2 all right and uh, negative 2 along the y-axis and this is in fact this position is over here so this number can be represented like this also where the x-axis part is the real part and the y-axis part is the imaginary part and this is origin and similarly if you talk about another number another uh, another number of this kind that is uh, minus 2 plus 2i so minus 2 is in fact this is real so minus 2 is over here and plus 2 means it is not the real because it is associated with i therefore it goes along the y axis uh, along the y axis but you can see it is plus so it goes along the point y axis so say plus 2 is over here so negative 2 and 2 coordinate is over here. So another number can be like this. Okay. So in this case, uh, we call the x-axis now as real axis. Okay. Because we took the real part along the x-axis and the y-axis will now be called imaginary axis. So let's take one uh, one of this uh, real number. What happens? Let's see. So I'm taking here uh, one of this real number. We have uh, how many real numbers? One is minus two minus two i. You can see, and another is minus two plus two i minus two plus two i. Both are now different type of number than the real number. So let's take example of uh, another number. So I'm taking this sort of number. You can see here now, this is a real number, completely real number. And this is a, this is completely imaginary number because it associates I. So what you can say here is that here, it is the real part and this is the imaginary part. And this sort of combination of the real numbers as well as the imaginary numbers are now called complex numbers. Okay. And the complex numbers is, are actually denoted by usually Z, W, maybe T also, maybe by other letters also. So mostly we denote the complex number by Z let's now generalize the situation so here in this case in general in general 
you can write g equals to a plus ib or bi all right you can write ib or bi it doesn't matter and where a and b are real uh, real numbers but here you can see in the another part of this combination of the number you can see that it contains the imaginary part imaginary number i therefore this is called actually real part and this is called the imaginary part right imaginary part you have to see this sort of complex number on graph where we have supposed a and b as positive real numbers so you know that uh, in the complex number sense that we have discussed just now uh, is that this is for the real numbers real part and uh, and the y axis is for imaginary part so what you can also call it that uh, x axis as real axis for the given complex number z that means it's for a and the y axis you can write i m z that in uh, that means this is the imaginary axis for this given complex number a where the other part that means the imaginary part uh, will be plotted and now for example if you suppose g equals to it is a plus ib or bi also you can write it doesn't matter you can express that in terms of vector also that means vector has x component as a which is a real component and the y component as b which is the imaginary component that means if you would like to plot this sort of thing uh, on the rectangular axis then suppose that from here to here it is a and then up here it is b so its coordinate is in fact it is a and b okay and when you join these two lines for example what does this represent it represents the vector g equals to a plus i b so in this way we can suppose one axis as real axis for z and another axis y as imaginary axis for the given complex number z instead of saying instead of calling now as x axis as x or y axis as y we now call it r e g and i m g respectively so here in this case we can have a lot of benefits by this sort of graph later we'll uh, call this argon diagram so let's see that what we can work for from here now for example uh, if you would like to find the magnitude of this vector and suppose that this is angle theta made by the vector g that the complex number about this positive x axis in fact this is real axis for z so let me drop a perpendicular down to here and then when you apply pythagoras theorem or you just if you apply this is coordinate for this origin is 0 0 so if you apply distance formula between these two points you will have the magnitude of g in this case okay so say this is perpendicular and then this is base and you know that if you are using pythagoras theorem then you know that hypotenuse equals to under the root p square plus b square and hypotenuse in fact here is the magnitude of this vector z so we can write here modulus sign for z and in place of uh, p square you can write here height as b yes this height you can see this height is b so you can write here b square plus and the base from here to here is a0 all right so the base is base length is a so we can write here a square then write in order so it is going to be under the root under the root a square plus b square all right so in this way we can find the magnitude of z as we uh, find that in the general co coordinate geometry all right and also in the uh, vectors and let me tell you what is this this is the angle made by the vector g 
with this positive x-axis that is reg in, uh, here in complex number. So this angle of G, which is made by this positive real G, is in fact called the direction of this vector G, and in fact, the direction of this complex number G, that is G equals to A plus IB. And so, for example, in order to find the direction of this vector G, what you can write here is that this is tan theta, and you know that tan theta from trigonometry that this is P by B, and perpendicular is, it is B, okay? Perpendicular is B, you can see here, the height is B here, perpendicular height. And in fact, B, which is the base, base is in fact A. So in this case, we found theta equals to tan inverse of, if you take this to the other side, it's going to be tan inverse of B by A. This B by A could be in any other, quadrant also, and it could be sometimes negative and positive that we'll discuss later. So if, uh, theta is the direction of this vector G about this real axis. But in the language of, in the language of complex number, the direction of that complex number is called, that, that means this theta is called, argue meant of, G and is written in sort as A R G of G. So therefore, instead of writing theta, now we'll use the term A R G of G equals to tan inverse of B by A. So in this way, we can find the direction of this complex number when we plot this on a rectangular axis of Cartesian form. Let's now see what happens when that means if a equals to zero, you can see here z equals to zero plus ib, zero plus ib or bi, all right? And then this is bi, uh, this is bi, so you see here that this is now completely imaginary, okay? That means purely imaginary, all right? And when you see here that B equals to zero, that means another value B equals to zero, then obviously this is Z equals to A plus, I times zero means it is zero because uh, even though this is major number, but the algebraic derivations are like in real number system. So it is equals to A. So we, uh, we saw that this is purely real number. So you can say here that this is completely real number or real term, all right? And one more thing you can discuss over here, here is that uh, for example you say g equals to zero right so then it is possible to write zero plus zero times i so in fact zero is real number but you can see the zero contains both because x is real y is imaginary but zero has both over here. So even though it is z equals to zero, you can write or you can at least express uh, this zero in terms of a complex number. And this is also possible that, for example, suppose that g equals to uh, 3i, for example, you can see that this is completely imaginary, number, imaginary part or imaginary number, you can say, but this is possible to write in the real number sense also because zero has both real and imaginary numbers. So zero plus three i. That means we express uh, this sort of number in terms of a plus i b. That is, this is also a complex number now. Okay. And let me write g equals to nineteen. Okay. So only the real number is there. For example, imaginary part is zero, but it is possible to write in the form of. This is not the imaginary number, in fact, or complex number, but you can 
express this sort of thing uh, uh, in the form of complex number uh, wherever we need them. So here you can see that you can write here 19 plus zero times of i, and you can compare this 19 plus zero i with z equals to a plus i b. So this is also possible to express a real number in terms of complex number, even though uh, z is purely real. So what did we notice that here is that the real number line is of one dimension only. So that is one dimensional figure or one dimensional line you can say. But here you can see that this is not the complex number line. In fact, this is a complex number plane. And here you can see that one is the real axis and another is the imaginary axis and both the axis compose a plane. And therefore, this sort of uh, complex numbers representations are actually the two dimensional figure, all right? So you can in general say that real number line is one dimensional while complex number plane, we say plane is two dimensional. Uh, we'll now discuss about the algebra of complex numbers. So this is not much different than the general algebra that we do in real number sense. However, we need to be careful uh, with the effect of different powers of the unit imaginary numbers i. So let's see that uh, what are the, the values for the different powers of the imaginary, imaginary number. So here, uh, let's see if uh, I would say like, for example, if I'm writing I, okay, then this is going to be under the root minus one. What if you write I square, it's the square of under the root of minus one, and then this is minus one. So let's see that how amazing fact is it here that any number plus minus A in general say, or you take any number, uh, seven, if you square plus seven and also the minus seven, it's, your result is always positive, in the real number sense, okay? If you go to the same sense, but here you can see that a square of a number is negative number, negative real number, you know? So this is a strange and hence I has been found as number of different dimension and hence its name is imaginary number, all right? So if you go to C, I to the power three, for example, it means you can write here, I square times I, okay? I square is, we have seen here that this is minus one, so minus times I is, it is minus I, okay? So it's like in uh, general algebra that we do in real sense. It, it is just acting as if it is a letter like x, y, z, 2x, 3x, minus uh, 5x plus 7y, something like that. And then to the power 4 means we have it is i square, i square, just like a to the power 4 is a square, a square, and both i square and i square are negative 1, so, so minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1, okay? Then what happens if it is five, you can see that it is i to the power four and i, and i to the power four, just now we have seen that this is one, so it is one time i is i. And i to the power six is in fact, uh, you can write i to the power five, okay, i to the power five, and times it is i, and you have seen that i to the power five is again i, and then this is times one, and then, sorry, i, and i times i is i square equals to, again, it is minus one. So what have you noticed here? That when the, you have seen here that this is an increasing power of i. So when it is a square, it is only the real number. When the power is odd, like three, five, and maybe seven also you can try, okay? So then the numbers are for the odd number, not the six, but for the four, four and three, you can see that this is, the result is, 
imaginary. Okay, but only difference is that sometimes this is minus i, sometimes this is plus i, and the same in the real sense also. Sometimes it is minus one, and sometimes it is plus one. So can you try up to the power at least up to i to the power seventeen and check what happens up to seventeen? Okay. Then uh, after that you read off uh, the what pattern you have been getting. It is different that you'll get the answer either one or i imaginary, but only difference is that you have to check that where it is a negative one uh, and positive one and where it is uh, negative i and positive i. Okay, so what you can see here is that we are talking of the algebra of the complex number. So this is not that much different from the algebra in the real sense. So for example, you say that you are given two complex number like one property is like one complex number as g equals to a plus ib for example and another complex is complex number is uh, say it is w so that it is uh, c plus ib c plus id you can say all right so then what happens if you write uh, then if then uh, Yes, then then g equal to w. That is, g means here. You can write here, a plus i v equals to c plus. This is d, c plus i d. Okay, so then z equals to w. That is, these two complex numbers are equal. I f f means this is if and only if. That means we are talking the proof in both the way. If and only if a equals to c and b equals to d. Okay, so in this way, in the two complex numbers are equal. That means their real parts as well as their Im imaginary parts. If they are equal, then you can say that both the complex numbers are equal. Now, in second, uh, let's see like addition and subtraction of the complex number. For example, if you write here g equals to a plus ib and w equals to already let's take the same example c plus id for example then g plus w equals to a plus ib and then plus c plus id now take all these real terms like a and c together so you can write here a plus c and then plus i you take common then it is b plus d i okay so in this way we can add the complex numbers and also this is possible to subtract also so for the same complex number and z minus w equals to uh, you can write here a plus i b and then minus c plus id uh, open the bracket or otherwise you to understand when you open the bracket minus will multiply to plus to make it a minus so it is a minus c so real part you can see here a minus c and in the imaginary part you can see that i is common out from both the terms ib and id so it is plus and due to this minus is going to be minus so it is b minus d i so in this way we can perform uh, algebraic operation like uh, as in uh, usual algebra and then also you can see uh, that what happens and here in this case uh, let's suppose that here in this case g plus w what if you find w plus g try yourself that whether or not you'll get the same result and here in this case now let's talk about uh, now multiplication Okay, so I'm taking the same complex number over here. Like, let's find your G times W, all right? G times W means it is A plus IB and W is uh, C plus ID. So just suppose that it's like A plus B times C plus D, all right? So this, there is nothing different like in usual algebra. Now, so that A goes with C plus ID and 
plus IB, that means another term IB also goes with C plus ID. Okay. So let's multiply it further. What happens? It is A times C plus A times D. And then you can write here I. And here B times C. And you can write I over here. Just we have been applying the distributive law. That means we have been multiplying this sort of thing. And then plus uh, B times of D. And I times I is I square. Okay. And then you can see that this is AC. Let's see that this is purely uh, real part. And now uh, AD in the term AD and BC, uh, there is I common. So you can write here AD. Sorry. Uh, you could write here, you can write here AD plus BC, where I is common from both the terms. And here, can you see here I square? I square means just now we have seen that I square is minus one. So what happens here? This is minus one. In fact, I square is minus one. So minus times plus is minus. So it is minus BD. Now it is now purely the real term, real number term. And it is now take all the real terms together. So it is AC minus BD. And then plus, take that imaginary, imaginary part here, then AD plus BC, so I. So what did you see that? G is complex number and W is complex number, then their product is also a complex number, okay? Now, can you check whether G times W equals to W, w times J? Okay, so take that as your practice work and let's see what happens uh, for this sort of multiplication. And now we can also talk about the division of the complex number. We take the same complex number. So for example, here it is IB and division means you divide G by G. Okay. Sorry, G by W. All right. So here in this case, for the G by W, so G is it is A plus IB and its uh, denominator is W that is C plus ID. So in such case, in such cases, what you have to do actually that you have to rationalize the denominator, okay? That A plus IB by C plus ID. And if this is plus, then we multiply both in the numerator as well as in the denominator by C minus ID, that will be called the conjugate of uh, the complex number W that we'll discuss now again. Uh, so it is uh, C plus, uh, then it is C minus ID, all right? Then you can see in the denominator, upside it is just to simply multiply it, A plus IB, and then this is, uh, C minus ID, and then you can see here is that uh, it's like in uh, A plus A plus B and A minus B term, so that equal to uh, C S uh, A square minus B square. So in place of A square, there is C square and minus. You can see that uh, in place of B, there is D I or I D. So we write here I D square, and finally you'll get it is that if you like, then multiply or just leave it like like this. Uh, if you want, you may multiply these two also, like we did over here. Or you can just, uh, if you like, then you can just uh, already here, so you can copy out uh, from this term, what you have got that the multiplication, uh, uh, no, it's not like that, but only the method is like that, okay? So you, uh, you could multiply this, and then it is uh, A plus IB and C minus ID. And the denominator, I'm concerned about the denominator. This is C square and this is plus D square. Why? Because here you can see that this is I D square. That means this is I square and D square. And the value of I square is minus one. So minus time minus is plus over here. Okay. So it can be better demonstrated by a 
by an example by taking some complex number in the number form and the, in, in the not uh, in the fixed number form just like let's take uh, we want to this is 2 plus 3i for example and you want to divide this complex number by 3 plus 2i okay then how you can solve it is that you rationalize it so it is 2 plus 3i over it is 3 plus 2i and then times it is uh, if it is plus then you write over here it is minus 2i and then this is again you balance by the same number this is 3 minus 2i and then it is upside you can multiply this so it is two times of uh, 3 minus 2i and then plus another term is 3i so you can write here 3i times of uh, 3 minus 2i and in the denominator you can see that it's like a plus b and a minus b this is the product of a plus b and a minus b so that is equal to a square minus b square so in place of a square there is 3 square in place of b square there is 2i so write here 2i square and then let's go further so 2 times 3 is 6 9 plus 4 is 13 so let's write separately the real terms and the imaginary part so you can write here 12 by 13 plus 5 by this is plus by 13 i where 12 by 13 is the real part and this 5 by 13 is the imaginary part so in this way we can also divide uh, the two complex numbers like in usual algebra so let's now talk about what is the conjugate of a complex number g equals to a plus i b okay so in fact the conjugate of this complex number is the reflection about this real line so what it is going to happen actually the image of this object uh, when uh, this uh, this line uh, is reflected about this real axis then its image looks like this it's okay so what happens here from here to here in the real sense it is a zero this point is a zero a remains positive a so here a remains positive a but what about the b because b is uh, to the another side of uh, below this uh, real g axis okay so that uh, b is now it is uh, negative b so what happens if you write this is origin so in this case if you indicate this complex number then it would be like instead of a plus ib it will be now a minus ib or a minus bi okay so therefore and the conjugate of the given complex number for example here it is written z so it can be written like this g bar or z prime or z star so these are the symbol that represents the conjugate of the given complex number okay here in this case z so therefore you know to write the conjugate of this complex number what you can write here that z star equal to just change the sign between the real part and the imaginary part so that it is a minus ib okay then what happens if you put like this for example your given complex number is z equals to a minus ib for example okay then what you can write over here that this is a plus and minus i all right you can write this way also and therefore if you would like to find a conjugate of g star in this case the g in this case now so g star is going to be it is a and if it is positive you change that as negative so it is minus ib and then it is a minus time minus is plus so this is plus i so what you have seen that is that if a is if a minus ib is conjugate of a plus ib then a plus ib is conjugate of a minus ib as well okay and similarly if you like to uh, see one sort of number like this for example say w equals to minus 2 plus 3i for example then what will be w star is that equals to it is minus 2 so make sure that sign changes between the real and uh, the uh, this positive sign if it is so it is between real and uh, the imaginary part so we don't change sign for this real part only so it is 2 and plus becomes it is minus this is 3i okay 
similarly uh, for example uh, say it is uh, w or t equals to any complex number t equals to uh, minus 2 uh, minus 3i for example or 2 plus 3i no problem uh, 2 plus 2 minus 2 minus 4i for example okay therefore t star that means the conjugate of the complex number t uh, will be 2 and minus will become now plus it is 4i okay and then what about the magnitude of the complex number uh, g star for example okay so here you can see that and we have already seen that magnitude of z that is the magnitude of uh, a plus i b we found this as under the root a square plus b square and therefore if you say this is z star that is the conjugate of z is a minus i b okay and then you use the same sort of thing so it is under the root a square plus but b is here negative so it is minus b square and then it is under the root a square plus because the square of negative is positive so it is b square all right so therefore uh, we found that uh, magnitude of that is modulus of z equals to the modulus of its conjugate okay similarly other sort of algebraic work you can see that it is z equals to for example it is 2 minus 3i it is written over here then what about z times of g star okay so we simply multiply this like z is 2 minus 3i and then g star that means its conjugate is when it is minus between these two terms so it is now plus 3i so fortunately in this case it is in the form of a minus b times a plus b so it is a square minus b square so we can write here 2 a square minus 3i a square and this is 2 times 2 is 4 and 3 times 3 is 9 and times i square and you know that i is minus 1 so you can write here 5 minus 9 times of minus 1 and this minus times minus will be plus so in fact it's going to be a 4 plus 9 and 9 plus 4 is 13 and this is the answer okay and then can you check okay can you check whether g times g star equals to g star times g okay yeah now for example for the same example, if you'd like to find the modulus of z times g star, okay, what would be the modulus of g times g square? So here it is also possible to write z and then it is z star, okay? So, and uh, 2 square means a square and minus 3 square means this is b square and then times uh, for you can see here for g star it is now this is g star yes this is now a means 2 so it is 2 a square and then this is 3 a square in place of b so what we have actually uh, this is 4 plus 9 is 13 so you can write here root 13 and times this is again root 13 all right so what we have got actually that that means it is 13 so you can see that when you multiply these two, you know, and then its magnitude, fortunately, this is only the real number. And the same thing we have got in the magnitude over here. So either you take the magnitude of z and g star by just by multiplying these two numbers first, and then your value was 13. And the same thing we obtained was here about z times modulus of g star, that is the conjugate of g. And similar thing, you can check yourself uh, for your better practice that whether or not uh, z by g star equals to g star over, sorry, modulus of z over modulus of g star, not only for the conjugate, but for the 
other complex numbers also. For example, modulus of the complex number W by G. Yes. And take any, uh, any two different examples of the complex number and try it yourself in order to check whether or not that is equal to modulus of W by modulus of G. Now, let's do an example that it said that solve this equation. That means you have to get the all possible values of Z from this quadratic equation and hence find its conjugate. Okay, so here you can see that here 5g square plus 14g uh, plus 13 equals to 0. You can see that this is quite equation in g. So you can apply this formula x equals to minus b. So in place of here x here it would be g. So minus b plus minus under the root discriminant that is b square minus 4ac by 2a. All right. And then otherwise you can go to the calculator function. I think that's in function 5 and then uh, I think 3 or 4. Yes. And then I've got either by applying this formula or by using the calculator, your value will be like this. So I have noted it down over here. So its value is minus 7 by 5 and then it is plus 4 by 5 i one value as this because and another value is negative 7 by 5 and then minus it is 4 by 5 i. So what did you notice here is that z has two values because this is a quiet equation so it can have maximum number root as Two. So one root is negative 7 by 5 plus 4 by 5g or and another is minus 7 by 5 minus 4 by 5g. If you compare these two uh, complex numbers, what we have found that the first complex number is conjugate to the second complex number. That is the second answer of this equation and vice versa, you know. So therefore, if you say, if you say z equals to minus 7 by 5 plus 4 by 5, you know, then your z star will be going to be another number here, minus 7 by 5 minus 4 by 5 i, okay? Or if you take z equal to, uh, like in z star, that, that this, then another number will be the conjugate of this second number and now also notice that okay whenever you find answer of the given variable in terms of complex number you will always get that complex number in pair and in each pair you will see that they are conjugate to each other like in here now here in another example you can see here that g is given as 5 plus i root 3 is a root of quadratic equation, all right? Then find this quadratic equation. And just now we have seen that the roots of the quadratic equation, if these are in terms of complex number, we found those are conjugate to each other. So it is, you can see here that since g equals to five plus i root three is one of the root of this quadratic equation, then another root must be Okay, then another root must be g star equals to, must be g star, that means conjugate of this complex number, that means it is 5 minus under root 3i or i root 3. Okay, now you call this root as alpha and this another root as beta, that means uh, here you can say that g equals to alpha. And even though this is a star, so you say that this is another root, uh, this is another root of g, that is g equals to beta, all right? So in plus of beta, you have uh, 5 minus i root 3. In place of alpha, you have 5 plus uh, i root 3. So therefore, you can say that uh, the quadratic equation, uh, the quadratic equation 
in this case you can write this as like z minus alpha times z minus beta that you have already worked in the uh, quadratic equation so that means if alpha is a root that means you can say that if you transfer this to the left so z minus alpha is one of the factor and from here you have z minus beta is one of the factor that means uh, when you multiply these two and equate to zero that means uh, the resulting expression will give you the quadratic equation so i am not taking zero at this time because it is already known that uh, alpha is due to the quadratic equation equals to zero and now let's multiply this what happens after that so this is z square okay and this is g times g is g square and then now it is uh, g minus beta so you write down here beta g and now multiply by this minus alpha so it's going to be minus alpha g and then it is minus times minus is plus so finally it is alpha times beta so let's rewrite it so it is g square solve it further so it is g square and then you take minus common it's going to be alpha plus beta z because z is common here and this is alpha times beta you can see that alpha plus beta is the sum of the root and alpha times beta is the product of the root so if you have the values available for alpha plus beta and alpha times beta so when you replace back these values then we will have the required quadratic equation whose roots are whose one of the root is phi plus i root 3. so here for the sum of the root you can find the sum of the root as alpha plus beta so you can see here that alpha plus beta alpha means here one of the root is phi plus i root 3 and then plus beta you can see is that it is alpha plus beta means it is plus so beta means you can check here yes beta means this this is phi minus i root 3 and you can see that here minus i root 3 plus i root 3 they got cancelled out so it is 10 now now we are concerned to find uh alpha times beta okay so alpha times beta is going to be it is phi plus i root 3 and then multiply with uh, 5 minus i uh, root 3 okay and then it is it's like a plus b times a minus b so it is phi square and then this is minus i root 3 in place of b square you can write i root 3 square and then it's going to be 25 and this is going to be a square and a square will be cancelled out and i square is minus one so it is plus three so it's going to be 28 so what you could write here that in place of in place of alpha plus beta uh, we could write here that uh, it is alpha plus beta is 10 all right and for alpha and beta we can put here 28 and hence our required quality equation will be like this equals to z square minus 10g plus 28 and this is the answer now even though this is the answer you can check whether or not phi plus i root 3 is one of the root so this would be a good idea especially while you are in practice so let's have a few more algebraic works over here so let me find here that uh, what if uh, you write g plus g star okay so we can see here that in general this is x plus i y and then plus this is x minus i y and you can say that minus i y and plus i y they got cancel out so this is 2, 2x so this is completely real all right so in this way you can practice yourself and what if it is z minus g star okay uh, that's going to be 
this is x plus i y and this is minus x because of minus time minus it is plus i y and this real number seven cancel out here so what you have got here that this is two times of y i so it is completely imaginary okay this sort of work you can have look at yourself also so this is completely imaginary okay so let me check for few more results if i have yes then you can try for g times g star and if you like you can also check whether or not g times of g star equals to g star times of j and uh, i will also suggest you to uh, try for g y g star equals to what that means what you can write here you put in place of g x plus i y and place of g star that means the conjugate of g is x minus i y and then rationalize uh, the denominator and then check what sort of result you get it and a uh, few more important uh, results are like uh, so uh, let me tell you that uh, if you try this way, is uh, final answer is is final answer is going to be. Let me copy out it from here. This is x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared, right? And then it is plus. Now the part imaginary part we are working with here. So it is two x y by x squared plus y squared equal and times i here okay so you can see that uh, you put this g and g and it's uh, conjugate in the denominator and you try to get this sort of result and then also you may try that what happens if it is g star divided by g that means conjugate of g is divided by the complex number itself okay so this sorts of uh, uh, derivation practice are most important to have a uh, better uh, in depth in the uh, calculation and derivation in the complex numbers. Okay, and few more thing I can see here is that uh, you can also try for finding the result of one by z. Okay, that means the reciprocal of z, and then for z plus one by z maybe or one by z star. Okay, something like that, and also z plus g star that's not two g star and then you can take the star that means the conjugate of the final answer that you get it from z plus g star and uh, also if you like uh, you can try furthermore for g plus g star to the power minus one that means inverse of it what you do actually first of all add these two you know uh, g and g star and get the reciprocal that sort of thing and then see that what sort of results you'll get so those are uh, very important work to do in order to have a better practice in uh, complex number in the beginning okay guys uh, this is all for now in the next class uh, we'll discuss about the complex plane and that includes writing complex numbers in different form uh, different form means uh, we'll mostly discuss about argon diagrams and also Euler's number. Okay, so argon diagrams and the Euler's number uh, will be of great importance in the next lesson. Okay, so uh, thank you for attending today's class. See you in next class. So bye for now.